We saw a lot of offense on last night's Daily Fantasy Baseball slate, in part because teams are down to their third, fourth starters in the rotation. Tonight, we could see that because there are some guys in that mold on this slate. There are some good spots for offense, but we also get back some of the opening day studs. Max Scherzer is here. Shane Bieber is here. Robert Valdez, Julio Arias, Luis Castillo. So it's this blend of we do have some guys who can struggle for sure at the back end of the rotation, but also the studs are out in almost close to full four. So we can see very high scores tonight across daily fantasy baseball, meaning you're going to need a lot of points to keep up. So we're going to break down which players could get you said points, how to keep up with the field and hopefully fill out good lineups for tonight in daily fantasy baseball. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel podcast network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com here to break down an 11 game main slate for tonight with lock set for 7.05 PM Eastern for today. So again, that does not include the game's at 6.40 for tonight, similar to last night, so just the 7.05 p.m. games on for tonight. Weather for this main slate, there are three games for tonight with temperatures in the 50s at first pitch. Once again, temperatures in the 50s tend to lead to lower scores. That did not happen last night for the Red Sox and Pirates game, but that game is on this checklist once again. Red Sox and Pirates and Fenway. 50 degree temperatures. That is the coldest game on the slate, followed by the Guardians and the A's in Oakland and the Dodgers and the Rockies in LA. So in those games, I would downgrade bats across the board. You don't need to cross them off. I think the Red Sox and Pirates, once again, at least interesting for tonight. But, you know, I think the Guardians in a decent matchup. I think the Dodgers are in an okay spot against Herman Marquez. But be sure you are accounting for weather this time of year when there is a big delta between the warmest games and the coldest games. In Kansas City, for the Blue Jays and the Royals, winds are out to left field at 21 miles per hour. It's also 79 degrees out, so good spot for hitting between the Blue Jays and the Royals. Similar spot in St. Louis for the Cardinals and Braves, though, a bit closer to a crosswind there. So I checked back on the wind direction for both uh, St. Louis and Kansas City today because if we get both those blowing out, could be pretty good. And I think that there are some good stacking options in both those games. So Kansas City, St. Louis, check back on later and then downgrade uh, the games in Boston, Oakland, and Los Angeles as a result of lower temperatures. We'll dig into the pitching preview for today in just one second. But first, we have our Masters Preview Podcast on the Daily Fantasy side of things already up here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed with myself and Brandon Gadula breaking down our favorite options for PGA DFS for Augusta. Find that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Hit and subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. We appreciate those of you who have done so already. Also, that podcast was streamed live on YouTube, so check that out over there on the FanDuel YouTube page. Also, should mention that the Solo Shot podcast go up on YouTube, too. Shout out to all of you watching YouTube right now. Appreciate you as always. So if you want to watch a video version or to prefer to watch on YouTube, you can find uh, the solo shot later in the day up on YouTube and then also the Masters podcast for this week. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball, must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with the Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. 
in Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700, or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY, or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's dig in now to the pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate where we find Shane Bieber at the top of the salary pool on FanDuel. He comes in at $11,000 facing the A's. You understand that. Max Scherzer is 10-8. Julio Arias against the Rockies at 10-5. Luis Castillo is 10-1. Framber Valdez is 98. We have Andrew Heaney, Nick Pavetta, Ronzi Contreras, Steven Matz, and Jose Suarez as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, we do have a lot of good pitchers on tonight's slate. And... Of those guys, I think Max Scherzer is a top guy and think is an operative word there because I do believe you could push back on this notion because Scherzer in his first start did see decreased velocity from where he was at for the most of last year. I still like him, but it is worth noting that Scherzer's facing the Brewers. They have good power, but they also will strike out. They have a 24% strikeout rate against righties on their current active roster since the start of last year which leads to a really big strikeout projection for Scherzer at 8.02, at least based on my numbers. That's the upside here. The minus is that the velocity was down in his debut, as mentioned. The fastball velocity down about a mile per hour from last year. The cutter was down two miles per hour, though that pitch has been reduced in his arsenal recently. And reduced velo for an older pitcher always concerning. And it's especially an issue because you'll see velo down a lot early in the year, but it's typically because velocity is lower in colder weather. But Scherzer was in Miami in his first start, so that was not an explanation here. So there are downsides. The reason I'm here still is that it was just one start. He still had a 14.3% swing and strike rate in that game, which is very good, and he gets a high strikeout opponent here. So I think that's enough to put Scherzer first on our list at $10,800, but I don't blame you if you want to pivot. There are justifications for going elsewhere based on the downsides of Scherzer and the velocity. But I do still want to be here and still think that Scherzer is going to be the premier pitcher on tonight's slate. If you want an option that has a bit more safety, I think you can take a softer matchup. That could be via Shane Bieber. If you want to, we'll talk about him later on. My preference though, is from Valdez. You save a let or $1,200 gets the Tigers at home. And I think the Valdez is in a very good spot. The Tigers, have a 94 WRC plus against lefties. That ranks third lowest on the slate. They have a 124 ISO, which is the worst, and they strike out plenty. So it's a very good matchup for Framber Valdez. Valdez was solid, but not spectacular in his first start this year. He did throw five shutout innings against the White Sox, but just four strikeouts in that game, a 10.6% swing and strike rate. That's fine. He went just 85 pitch. Is less than I was expecting from him. So there are some downsides with Valdez, to be sure. But the White Sox are a much tougher team against lefties than the Tigers are. And the velocity for Valdez was sick. It was up on his fastball from last year, a sinker. And it was down on his off-speed pitches. So the delta between his off-speed pitches and his fastball increased a pretty decent amount. So... I don't think we need to be worried about Valdez just because he didn't get a ton of strikeouts or a ton of whiffs in that game. I have Valdez projected for 6.7 strikeouts here. That ranks third on the main slate, and strikeouts are not even the biggest appeal of Valdez. It's the bad of ball profile. It's the matchup. It's being at home. I think the, the run projection pretty low against him. So if you want to go Valdez first over Scherzer, I'm not going to push back on that. I just think that Scherzer's upside is a bit higher. So to me... It's Scherzer 1, Valdez 2, Bieber 3. We'll talk about him more later on. Now, as far as value options for today, the guys who were not available to us in opening day, I think we've got some okay ones. Yusei Kikuchi seems to always have a good spring. It happens every year. We get sucked in by velocity, but he was good again this spring. Facing the Royals, don't hate that, but he's playing in good hitting weather. I don't mind Steven Matz. Um, Really tough matchup for him, but I think he's a decent pitcher. So you could consider Kikuchi and Matz. I'm going to go with Andrew Heaney here. And if you turn off the podcast after hearing that name, I don't blame you. I will not be offended. Makes me queasy too. But the upside for Heaney is really fun. Now he's volatile. He made 14 starts last year and let up a 46% hard hit rate and a 46% fly ball rate. So if you said, hey, I want to stack the Orioles against him instead, be my guest. 
totally fair. I might do the same at times as well. But despite that, despite the horrible batted ball profile, he's still in a 3.06 ERA, and it's because of all the strikeouts. You can't let up a dinger if they don't make contact. It just limits the number of balls in play. Heaney had a 35% strikeout rate in that sample, which ranks highest on this slate, even including Scherzer, Bieber, etc. I do think he stretched out. Uh, back on March 24th in the spring, he went four and two thirds innings, faced 25 batters. So he should be mostly good for a full leash. And the O's will strike out 23% strikeout rate against lefties. So yeah, it's risky. He could get punched around if he scored negative points on FanDuel, FanDuel tonight. No surprise for me. But if you're looking at the list of guys who can get you 60 FanDuel points, I think that list does include Heaney. So it's a fair trade off to me. I'm going to use Heaney personally. I don't blame you if you don't want to. I don't blame you if you want to stack the O's against him. And again, I will consider that myself as well. But um, I do think that the that Heaney makes sense as a pitcher for tonight because of the strikeout upside he presents and because he navigated around his issues pretty successfully last year. So I mentioned you could stack the O's. They're not in the top three, but they are a consideration for me today. Let's talk about other stacks I do like for today. And I think that when you're looking at the list of stacks, there are a lot of teams in contention for the second stack. But to me, I think the first one is pretty settled, and that is the Rays against Chad Cool. Cool is making his Nats debut. He struggled last year, and it was with the Rockies, so you could write it off as being a Coors Field thing, but it wasn't just at home. Uh, he had a 6.32 ERA on the road last year as well. The best version of Cool in terms of pitching is when he's throwing a lot of sliders. And he did do that. He did settle into that zone over his final 11 starts, and it did lower his skill interactive ERA to 4.72, which was an improvement from the full season. But his hard contact rate went up to 49%. He let up a 8.70 ERA. Cool did not have a great spring, which says to me that um, he was probably still letting up a lot of hard contact there. So he's not facing the toughest lineup here with the Rays because the Rays have a 104 WRC plus versus righties dating back to the start of last year. So this is more so about the pitcher than it is about the actual offense. But I do think we should load up on the Rays tonight, given the issues Cool had last year, specifically when he was outside of Coors Field, and given that the, the Rays are a pretty decent offense as well. We used to in the past when we were stacking against Cool, like back in like the the heyday of uh, DFS, you would favor lefties all the way. Here, I don't think we need to care too much because Cool kind of got rocked by both last year. Definitely let up a better heart or better batted ball profile to lefties and righties. So I would favor lefties a bit, but I think that we can kind of go whatever you want with here. It's a good thing for Wander Franco at 37. He's been awesome to start this year. No surprise. A guy who will steal some bags. Gotta love that. Brandon Lau is low salary to $3,100. Hasn't gotten off to the start I'd want. Uh, the, his spring numbers were okay from a power perspective too. So, you know, not leaping the way I have in the past at Lau, but still do like him. And then Luke Rayleigh is hitting the middle of the lineup for both their games against righties and did play the entire game in both those as well. Also stole seven bases in 63 games in AAA last year. So Rayleigh could run. I'm open to him if he hits there again. Pretty good spring for Rayleigh too. So I think the Rays deserve to be at the top of your stacking options for tonight. If you need help getting to Scherzer, Bieber, Valdez, I think that Luke Rayleigh could be a good guy in terms of a low salary with a path to a decent ceiling. I do think the weather should play into our other stacks for tonight. I mentioned the wind being out in Kansas City and St. Louis, and that's going to play into both of our next two stacks. Those are good conditions for hitting. It's also very warm in both those cities for today. I'm going to put the Jays in the second slot in Kansas City, and then we'll talk about uh, the Cardinals in the third slot. The Jays are facing Chris Bubich, who gets more ground balls than you'd like for stacking, but we can offset that with the amount of hard contact that Bubich allows. He started throwing more curveballs down the stretch last year, and his fly ball rate in that time, 31%. That's good. You want that for sure if you're a pitcher. But he let up a 44% hard hit rate, a very high number. His skill interactive ERA was 4.71 with a 19% strikeout rate. So the results were pretty poor. The peripherals pretty poor. And that means he could reverse course and go back to what he was doing before. But for the full season, Bubich let up a 45% hard hit rate with a 5.58 ERA. So I'm not sure if there is a quick fix to be had here when looking at Bubich and trying to correct the issues he has had. 
The Jays' offense used to be phenomenal against lefties. Uh, not even the not so distance pass. They're not quite that anymore. Traded away uh, Lourdes Gurriel, lost some other guys who uh, Taylor Scar Hernandez, who can hit lefties really well, but still a 104 WRC plus against lefties since the start of last year on the active roster, the current active roster. ISO is 150. They're not elite numbers, but I think it's good enough in this situation. So I'll be on the Jays here due to the combo of the matchup. Plus the weather, I think that's enough to make them viable for tonight. I do think we can find a high upside guy in the lower part of the order here. You look at um, a lot of lineups on FanDuel. You don't see a lot of people use guys lower in the order. So if you want to be different within a stack, you can dip lower in the order. And to me, I think that the guy we're targeting here is the bespectacle beast. Danny Jansen back in our lives once again. He hit eighth in their one game against the lefty. So might not hit super high, but Jansen... Just strokes it against lefties. 183 ISO against lefties in 2021. 226 last year, both in small samples. But if you combine them together, it's about 130 plate appearances. So decent sample there uh, for an ISO. Tons of fly balls. Uh, he's making enough hard contact. His salary is $2,500. I'm going to use Jansen. Even if he hits in the bottom of the order, I think that he makes a lot of sense. So if you want to be different without being dumb within your J stacks, I think that Danny Jansen is the route for doing so. Mention the third stack is going to be the Cardinals. And it's risky because it involves targeting an offense facing a prospect who is making his big league debut, which means they have not seen him before outside of watching tape, watching spring training, stuff like that. I am going to give it a shot here, though. I think it's uh, it's worth that. They're facing Dylan Dodd, uh, and if it were pretty much any other team, I probably wouldn't be itchy to stack against Dodd because I think he's good. Uh, he worked his way from high A to triple A last year, and he had good results at each stop. He got a good number of whiffs. He had a healthy ground ball rate in high A, not as much in double A. So I'm not entirely sure what to expect out of Dodd, but last year when he worked his way up, he was in his age 24 season. You would expect a guy in his age 24 season to dominate at high A. Now he has to face big leaguers. He has had just one start above double A. That was a triple A start. Now going up to the majors. And to his credit, Dodd was awesome in the spring. He had 20 strikeouts compared to four walks in 18 innings. The quality of opponent was not awful relative to a lot of other pitchers either. So he could be great here. He could shut them down for sure. But the guys in the Cardinals active roster had a 148 WRC plus against lefties or have since the start of last year with a 230 ISO. Those are unreal numbers. Now, a lot of that is because some of their younger guys don't have a sample there. Maybe they won't be as good, but so it's an inflated number. It will come down this year, but we can stack them even against quality lefties and Dodd could be that, or he could be below that. We don't really know as of now. So I think we should be on the Cardinals here against Dodd given there is uncertainty and given we know they are very good against lefties. I'm curious to see where Jordan Walker will hit tonight for the Cardinals because we've not seen them face a lefty yet. They got a lot of lefties higher up in the order. Maybe Walker moves up a bit uh, with a lefty out there, but really impressed with them so far. One strikeout in 17 plate appearances. He has a 47% hard hit rate. I think Walker is going to be good this year. He's very young, and he, like Dodd, coming up from double A. So there could be a learning curve, but he's looked he hasn't looked overmatched yet. He's looked good this spring. Um, I think that Walker could have a big game soon. He's willing to run. He's got some power facing a lefty. I think that's enough to make Jordan Walker a really fun play tonight at $2,500. So obviously go to the focal points on the Cardinals, all the old faithfuls against lefties. But Walker, I think, should be in that mix. As a guy to save, save us some salary. Speaking of them, to watch here and talk about the third guy we did not discuss, that's Shane Bieber. I'm going to put him third behind those guys. And that's because he looked okay in his first start. He does get the A's tonight, which is a great matchup. It's a good park for pitching, good weather. I have Bieber at 6.3 strikeouts, whereas Scherzer's at 8.0, Valdez 6.7. So Bieber behind them, which is why he's third of this group, but I can't yell at you if you want to put Bieber above them in a good matchup. I I think that makes sense, but personally, I want to sell out for strikeouts, and Scherzer gets me more of those. I think Valdez probably gets me more of those. He's also at home, so I'm okay prioritizing them over Bieber for tonight. I'm not sure who the Orioles are starting here because it was supposed to be Tyler Wells, but he had to come in last night through five, I believe, no-hit innings, so... 
pretty good choice by them after Bradish got hurt. So he was great, but it means not really sure who they'll go with here. Could be Kyle Gibson who would be on regular rest here. I like Gibson enough where if he were to start in a revenge game, I should note, uh, I wouldn't be looking to stack the Rangers. Could be Austin Voth. He let up enough hard contact last year where if it is Voth, I think the Rangers would be in play for stacking, but let's check back on that later uh, once the plan is announced and see who the or Orioles are throwing and see if you want to toss the Rangers into the stacking discussion for today. Finally, I don't mind giving Fenway Park a look tonight despite some poor hitting weather. Again, very low temperatures, but I think that both sides have at least some appeal. Rosie Contreras starting for the Pirates against the Red Sox. He led up a 45% fly ball rate and a 41% hard hit rate after coming back up from the minors last year. Nick Pavetta starting for the Red Sox in 10 starts with more forcing fastballs. He led up a 41% fly ball rate and a 43% hard hit rate. So there should be hard contact on both sides in this game. The question is, will it be enough to overcome the weather? It might not be, which is why they're not inside the top three for stacking, but I'm going to give it a shot. I just need to have them below the other stacks in better weather. So Fenway Park can play uh, both the Red Sox and Pirates, uh, but do you want to be a bit lower as a result of the weather? Let's finish up with the dinger calls for today. The boring one going back out to St. Louis. Let's go Paul Goldschmidt. It was a pretty tight call between him and Arenado. Arenado has a higher fly ball rate against lefties, but Goldschmidt the higher ISO. I'll go Goldie. I think they're both fun, though. So we'll go Paul Goldschmidt. It's a boring one. For the fun one, let's go with Luke Rayleigh. I mentioned that he's been hitting the middle of the lineup for the Rays against righties. Should do so again here. Facing Chad Cool, he is a lefty. So I think Rayleigh makes a lot of sense. So the boring home run call, Paul Goldschmidt. The fun one, Luke Rayleigh for Tuesday night. That's all that we have here for today on the Solo Shop. But as mentioned, our Masters podcast, previewing Augusta is up on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page. So if you want to find that go search over there, the daily ISO with Tom Vecchio is back today as well for an off night last night. Uh, we have UFC via Austin Swaim on select events and much more all right here in the same place. So go search for the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts and make sure you hit subscribe to get them as they go live. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sanis, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. -N -N -E you can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for Wednesday's Slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.